QuickBooks Online 2023 Bank Feeds for Credit Card Setup Process. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Here we are in our Bank Feeds practice file. We started up in a prior presentation using the 30 day free trial. We also have opened the free QuickBooks Online sample company. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. If you want the two open at the same time, we suggest using Incognito to open the sample company or another browser. You can open Incognito if using Google Chrome by selecting the three dots in the browser Incognito window type in into the search engine QuickBooks Online test drive. We're using the sample company to compare the accounting view, the one the bank feeds practice file is in and the business view, the one the sample company is in to toggle between the two. You can go to the cog drop down and switch the view on down below. We're gonna open some tabs to put reports in like we do every time, right click in the tab up top to do so, duplicating it, and then we're gonna duplicate the duplication process with a right click and duplicate again. Back to the tab to the middle, reports on the left, opening up the balance sheet report, which is in the favorites and should be in your favorites as well. If you're in the sample company, by the way, the reports, they're located and the business overview on the left hand side and then the reports just so you know just so you know where they're at on that view back to the tab uh, on the right this time reports on the left hand side let's open up the profit and loss otherwise known as the income statement the other favorite report change the range i'm going from 010122 tab 123122 tab run it to refresh it tabbing to the middle closing the hamburger going up to the top changing the range 010122 tab 123122 tab run it to refresh it you did that way too fast well that's because that's because we do it every time okay you should you should have seen like a hundred of these by now if you're not there's it you should go back to the prior ones so you could see all of them so let's go to the first tab now and open the bank feeds because that's where we've been focused on first tab we're going to go to the bankings on the left hand side bank feeds and then if you're in the business view, by the way, they're in the bookkeeping, as we'd all know at this point in time, transactions up top and then the bank transactions. That's where they're located in the business view. Now, in a prior presentation, we set up the bank feeds for the checking account, which is typically the first thing we think about with bank feeds, but it's not the only thing we should think about because we also have the credit card bank feeds that we could set up as well they function in much the same way the credit cards being facilitated from a financial institution and so they have similar workings to them so just a quick recap on how that might work and then we'll kind of link up our credit card just to give us a look at it uh, so most of the stuff we learned with the checking account will be much the same with the credit card account in that we're going to connect we have to have a general ledger account that we'll set up we have to then connect the bank feeds to that general ledger account and then the bank feeds will come into what I would call bank feed limbo, just like what we saw before. So we'll have to add that final information to pull them in from bank feed limbo into the promised land. You can call it credit card limbo if you want, want but it's kind of like the same limbo area, really, where it's all the same kind of limbo stuff. And we got to give it the added information, such as account uh, that it needs to be assigned to customers or most likely vendors with the side of the credit cards so it can be pulled in to the financial statement creation. The only difference being, of course, that we'll have a liability down here for the credit cards. So the credit cards are going to be a liability. So every time we pay for something with a credit card, you can imagine a situation where instead of paying stuff with electronic transfers out of the checking account, we pay for things with the credit card. We've got our credit card tied out to everything that we're paying for electronically and then of course hopefully we pay off the entire credit card balance at the end of each month so that we don't hit the financing charges and that could actually be you know a good kind of system uh, to do that and that means that whenever we make a purchase 
there's going to be an, an increase to the liability as opposed to a decrease to the cash account. So we'll just increase the liability. The other side will go to like expenses, like the utility bill, the phone bill, and so on with every purchase in the same manner as we saw with the checking account. And then periodically, hopefully monthly, we're going to have an inter bank fee transfer decreasing the checking account, right? Because we're going to pay off the credit card and then pay down uh, the credit card account. So the credit card account is actually a little bit easier in some ways than the checking account because with the checking account, we usually have to deal with both the decreases and the increases. So a significant part of the checking account that can add to complications is the revenue side of things. Whereas with the credit card, it's only used to pay things off. And then, and then the other side, the other direction of the transaction is to pay off the credit card. So you don't have that kind of deposit situation, which can be complicated depending on the type of your in industry you're in as you do with the normal checking account. Because you're dealing with just electronic transfers for a credit card as well, most of the time you can do, I'm going back to the flow chart, like we saw with like the vendor side of things on the checking account, you could just pay for things electronically and therefore depend on the bank in order to record the transaction. So you're actually constructing, you know, your credit card information pretty much totally from the bank oftentimes, instead of doing the full service kind of accounting system where you're going to first enter the charge in on our end. That would be like when we pay the utility bill, we, we enter the transaction on our end and then verify it to the credit card. And because it's such a short time frame between when the transaction happens and when it clears the credit card, the financial institution, we're often able to just basically depend on building our financial statements from the credit cards. And that makes the reconciliation process very easy because we constructed the whole thing basically directly from the financial institution instead of using it kind of as a verification type of thing. Similar process we saw with the bank feeds, but with we saw on the bank feeds on the checking account side, we saw some times where we have to deviate from a system where we just create our books from what's coming through on the bank. With the credit cards, we'll usually just construct our books from what's coming through on the bank and that usually works quite well. All right, so let's go ahead and, and see the adding of the credit card. So if I go to the general ledger on the left-hand side, we're gonna go to the accounting and then not the general ledger, the chart of accounts, the chart of accounts. If you're in the business view, by the way, the chart of accounts are in the bookkeeping and then the chart of accounts. Now within the chart of accounts, we're going to need a liability type of account, but it needs to be a specific liability. So it, I'm ordered by type here. So we don't have any credit card accounts in here as of yet. If you only have one credit card, you might just make one credit card account. If you have multiple credit cards, then maybe you make a parent account called credit card and then have the subsidiary accounts, possibly naming the actual credit card financial institution, possibly adding the last four digits of the number to verify and distinguish multiple credit cards you might be using in the business. Let's do that. I'm gonna add a new account up top and it's not a liability account. It's a kind of liability, but it has to be a specific credit card of account because that's the account that has the capacity to connect to the bank feeds. We're gonna say it's gonna be a credit card and uh, the tax section, I'll say credit card. I'm just gonna give this one the generic name of credit card as the parent account credit card parent account. So there it is. I'm going to save it. And then I'm going to make another account, which is going to be a subsidiary account to that credit card. So I'm going to say, let's make another one. And I'm going to say, this is going to be also a credit card account. And I'm going to hit the drop down and say, it's going to be a subsidiary actually of the credit cards of the credit cards. Actually, maybe I don't need to do that because that would be redundant because it's gonna still be able to be collapsed under the credit card account. So let's just go into this credit card account and I'm gonna edit it. I'm gonna edit it and say it was credit card for, let's say Visa. And then you might put like the last four digits of the number. The point is that you don't really want the last four digits of the number to be for external reporting. You want the, those last four digits possibly to help you to di distinguish for internal reporting. And if you're able to like collapse and expand 
the account categorization, then that makes it easier to distinguish between the two, to run a report for external reporting while still having the number for internal reporting. So if I don't have a sub account, then it's a little bit harder to collapse it in some ways, but it, it'll still be able to collapse by by section because QuickBooks will create another section called credit card. So hopefully it will take a look at that if I remember after we add some of the data. So now that the account is set up, I'm gonna go back up into the banking area, which is where our bank feeds are at. Now note that if your bank feeds weren't set up already, then you can set up a new account in the bank feeds. So the screen would look different, but most people probably, if they're setting up their credit card, had already set up their checking account and are now adding another item being the credit card. Also note that when you're adding uh, an account uh, for a link to the bank feeds, you can add the general ledger account typically as you go. So we added the general ledger account basically first. So then we can go to link account. So I'm gonna to go to the link account up top. And so this would be the same kind of process we would generally have for the bank accounts. If you were linking directly to the bank, you can search for you know Visa or whatever that you're linking to. And it's usually a pretty clean process, but remember you have the same caveats for the credit card as you do with the banks, making sure that you're pulling in the proper time frame so that you're not duplicating the information uh, in your system. So you're going far enough back that you're pulling up the information that you want. You're not duplicating the information and you're not missing uh, any information. Sometimes some financial institutions have some limits to how far back you can go with a direct bank feed. So in that case, you might wanna, in some cases, if you wanna go back like a year or multiple years and reconstruct your books or something like that, then uh, you might want to first download the information from the financial institution, which sometimes allows you to go a little bit further back. Or if you're using a practice problem, you might feel more comfortable downloading the information from the financial institution to practice with. Either way, you will end up in the same situation, which will basically be that you'll be in bank feed limbo with another card up top and your data on down below. So we're gonna do the, the second option here. We, we've downloaded the information from the financial institution. So if you go to your financial institution, you go to your credit card uh, place, there's usually some area where you can download the transactions and the formats of downloading the transactions are often Quicken, QuickBooks, or a comma sliced uh, item. So the ideal one would be to use QuickBooks, but if they don't have a QuickBooks item, then you might be able to use the one that's a comma delim delineated, which means delimited, delimited. <laughs> it's a comma sliced one, but usually you can open it in Excel. So the comma spliced one will look something like this and uh, you can use that one. But if they have one that looks like this, which is a QuickBooks one, it kind of looks like the desktop software icon, but it's actually not. This is actually the bank feed data. If I right click on it and look at the properties, you can see it's a QuickBooks OFX data. It's a .qbo file. That's the one we're going to use. Also just note that if you wanted to practice with data that wasn't from a financial institution, you can just create the information in say Excel. So if I was to open up Excel and I wanted to just upload some information to practice with the bank feeds to get a feel for it, I would just need a bank a date field. I would need an amount field and then I would need a description, a memo field. And then when you save the Excel file, you go to file, save as, and you wanna make sure that you change it from Excel to some kind of CSV comma delimited file, which is acceptable. And then you can practice with whatever data that you want to upload uh, there, but you lose some of the authenticity of the bank feed memo stuff that looks all funny uh, with the bank feeds. It's a lot more difficult to like create or edit a and actually uh, QuickBooks kind of data file that you download. All right, so let's go back in and upload that. So, so I'm going to go to the drop down and upload from a file. And so I'm going to use this option, dragging it from a file. Notice you've got all the options csv.qfx, and here's the QBO. That's the main one that should be as clean as possible to upload. QuickBooks should not have a problem, you would think, with that one uh, the most. It should be the easiest for QuickBooks is what I'm trying to say. 
Why don't you say it right then? I don't know, I can't talk. So we're gonna go to the credit card and then continue. So now we're gonna put this into, uh, it gives you the, your account information on the left. We're gonna put it into that credit card. Now, if I didn't add a credit card account, I could add it basically as we go here, but I added one. So here's my credit card one right there. That's the one, right? Yeah, that's it. So let's add that and continue. And so import completed, accept your transactions, done. And boom, now we've got two tabs up top. The second one is uh, the credit card information. So I'm gonna close this out and just try to look at my credit card information. Why is it doing funny stuff? Credit card information, close this out. Okay, there we have it. So now we've got our, cre our credit card stuff down below once again it's in bank feed limbo so generally that shouldn't have recorded a transaction on the financial so if i go to the balance sheet and i run it it generally shouldn't record a transaction here although sometimes you have that beginning balance problem you see it put a it put a balance in here because it's trying to record that beginning balance so that the cutoff date is always kind of an issue where you always want to think did you get enough information uh, into the system? Is it going far enough back that you need it to go back? And then what's, do you have to enter the beginning balances if this is the first time you connected the credit cards or are you just now turning on the bank feeds but you all you were already tracking the credit card information in the past? If it's the first time setting up the credit cards, you're probably gonna have that beginning balance issue from before you turned on the credit cards, right? And so we're gonna have to, uh, deal with that they made a transaction here to kind of pick that up from the banking information if i think that's appropriate then i can keep that here if i don't like it i can go into this transaction and put the other side to opening balance equity and just delete this and then i can figure it out when i do the bank uh reconciliations so i'll do the bank reconciliations just like i did do with the it's the same problem as with the checking account you'll have that same issue that we talked about so then so then we'll have to deal with that and i'll deal with it more when we get to the to like to the reconciliation process a lot of people don't reconcile the checking the, the credit cards as much formally because the credit cards should basically tie out exactly to to what's on your statement because you're creating all the data directly from the credit card feed but the the reconciliation is the same thing so you might as well kind of do it just to make sure that you're not doubling up on transactions or that you missed a transaction. And when you first do the credit cards, when you first set them up, you're gonna have that same beginning balance issue, which you're gonna to have to kind of reconcile before your credit card is, is rolling forward. Once you get the balance to be correct, then it should be good going forward. So we'll talk more about that uh, in a future presentation, but we're set up uh, good to go now. The other side of that transaction, you'll note they dumped into the opening balance equity. So whenever you have something in opening balance equity, that's an indication to you that QuickBooks did something funny, right? QuickBooks threw something on the other side for a beginning balance, or in this case, we, we said the inventory had a balance in it and they put something in here. So that should always be an indication that you wanna kind of double check and then probably clear out what's in opening balance equity because it does not look uh, professional. Nothing happened to the income statement, so, so no change on that in future presentations we'll go in here we'll take a look at the credit card we'll see that it's basically quite similar to entering transactions the general transactions once set up as with the checking account and then we'll have enter uh bank fee transactions we'll have to deal with with regards to uh paying off from the checking account the credit card balance and then and then we'll get into later possibly uh bank reconciliations and rec credit card reconciliations to deal with that beginning balance issue in both of those areas. Uh, one thing I wanted to note as well before I forget is when I was trying to set up the credit card, notice that over here, the credit card has this drop down, right? Because, and the reason it has this drop down is because the credit card is not just an other current uh, liability, which it is, but it's got its own special needs like the bank account does up top. And therefore it has its own account class. And that's why it has this drop down. So if you put your credit cards all under the credit card account, then you get this nice drop down. So you could report it externally as just credit card liability. And internally, you can have multiple credit cards with that last four digits of the number and so on so that you can 
know which credit card you're talking about. Now, the problem is sometimes is that this, this one collapses easily this way, but if you were to record, like if it was a sub account, then you can collapse. You could, you can collapse the, the lines and the sub accounts collapse. So that one doesn't collapse, even though uh, you have a collapsed statement, only the sub accounts would collapse that way. So that's why if you made another like credit card uh, parent account and then the sub accounts and you wanted to record a normal income statement, there's also, you can also record or create a summary balance sheet, which will collapse all of the categories like uh, current, current assets and so on. But if you just wanted to collapse like the sub accounts that you made, then you, and for external reporting, you won't be able to collapse that item. That's what I was kind of talking about when we set up the credit cards. So it might not be a problem. It's just internal reporting versus external reporting stuff. So that's that.